Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Since World War II, there has been this incredible sight to witness called the Elephant Walk. This name comes from big groups of ally bomber planes lined up to take off, looking like elephants walking in a line. Sometimes, there are over 1,000 planes in one of these lines. The United States Air Force uses the term maximum sortie search for this. The elephant walk isn't just for show. It's a way to show how well teams can work together. It prepares squadrons for war and helps pilots learn how to launch armed planes together. Keeping the Air Force ready for action is super important. And they do that by doing exercises, like the one at Hill Air Force Base. One recent demonstration of this readiness unfolded in a dramatic display of air power at the Hill Air Force Base, where 52 F-35A fighter bombers were recently sortie. This event, known as an elephant walk, showcased the agility and precision of these cutting-edge aircraft as they massed on the runway and took off one by one into the expansive Utah sky. As the first base to achieve full operational status with the F-16 Fighting Falcon over three decades ago, history now repeats itself with the F-35A. Currently home to the nation's sole four combat-capable F-35A squadrons, split between the active duty 388th Fighter Wing and the reserve 419th Fighter Wing, Hill Air Force Base serves as a testament to the Air Force's commitment to modernization and preparedness. The decision to conduct an elephant walk commemorating receiving the last 78 F-35As in December 2019 speaks volumes about the base's pride in its operational achievements. With 24 jets undergoing mid-air refueling by KC-135 Strato tankers after launch, the event exemplified the seamless coordination and logistical prowess inherent to Air Force operations. Despite the high cost associated with these exercises, which surpasses that of previous aircraft like the F-16, they serve as a tangible reminder of the Air Force's unwavering commitment to maintaining air superiority and global security. When it comes to the unwavering commitment to exhibiting extreme air maneuverability, no team but the Blue Angels comes to mind. They are officially called the U.S. Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron. These highly skilled pilots have been around since 1946, 
making them the second oldest aerobatic team in the world. The Blue Angels team has six Navy pilots and one Marine Corps pilot, and they fly Boeing F-A-18 Super Hornets, showing off their flying skills with precision. Two main types of F-A-18 are used in this event, the F-A-18A and the F-A-18B. The F-A-18A has just one seat and is known for being really good at flying and doing tricks. It has some fancy avionics, such as the AN-AAS-38 Nighthawk targeting pod and the AN-ASQ-173 laser spot tracker, which helps it aim accurately. Even though there weren't a lot of Nighthawk pods during the Gulf War, they were super useful for the US Navy and Marine Corps planes. The FA-18B is a bit different because it has two seats. They made some changes inside to fit the second seat, but it can still do everything the single seat version can. Mostly though, the two-seat planes are used for training. Known for their fascinating aerial displays, the Blue Angels perform in approximately 60 shows annually across 30 locations in the United States and two shows in Canada. Even though they have been doing this for a long time, they still use many of the same tricks and techniques they used back in 1946. Each year, around 11 million people watch their shows from March to November, and they visit over 50,000 people in schools hospitals, and community events. Since they started, the Blue Angels have entertained and inspired over 505 million people. They get about $37 million yearly from the Department of Defense budget as of November 2011. But their job is about more than just doing cool tricks in the sky. The mission of the U.S. Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron is to show off how proud and professional the Navy and Marine Corps are. They do this by doing unbelievable flying displays and visiting communities nationwide. Now, let's take a look at what happens behind the scenes to make those stadium flyovers happen. It's a tricky job. The hardest part is getting the timing and location just right above the stadium. To ensure everything goes smoothly, a ton of planning goes on behind the scenes. Satellite images are used from different angles to determine exactly where to fly and when. This planning is key to ensuring the flyover looks perfect during low pass.
Low-pass flights are when planes fly close to the ground, giving spectators a thrilling experience. These maneuvers show off how agile and fast the planes are at air shows, where planes zoom past at super low altitudes. But pulling off low-pass flights isn't easy. Pilots must plan carefully and fly with precision to keep everyone safe. They follow strict rules about how high and fast they can go and always stay alert to avoid accidents. Even though there are risks involved, low-pass flights are always a hit with the crowd, showcasing amazing flying skills and the capabilities of the aircraft. Apart from the fighter jets, you'll often spot big bombers like the B-1 and B-52 at air shows. Even though they're the older models, they're still in use because they're cheaper to operate than the newer ones. That's because they have simpler systems. This makes them a popular choice for both air shows and military missions. Take the B-2 Spirit Bomber, for example. It's the most expensive plane in the U.S. Air Force, costing a massive $2.1 billion each, with an operational cost of $135,000 per hour. One of the most commonly used aircraft for low-level flights for events is the B-1 Lancer. Originally, the B-1A was supposed to fly high and fast. But with the B-1B, they changed it to fly low. This means it can zoom close to the ground, almost as fast as sound. To deal with the bumpy ride when flying so low, Additional parts called canards are added to the aircraft. These canards help reduce the shaking and keep the plane steady as it flies close to the ground. In addition to the B-1 Lancer, Another well-known aircraft for such operations is the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress. It's a big, powerful bomber that's been around since the 1950s. Built by Boeing, it's been used by the United States Air Force and NASA for a long time. This plane can carry a whopping 70,000 pounds of weapons and fly for about 8,800 miles without needing to refuel. It's a real workhorse in strategic missions. This aircraft might seem old, but it's been upgraded to meet modern needs. They've swapped out the engines and avionics to make it better suited for today's warfare. Oh, take your patches, I'll see. These changes not only increase its efficiency, but also its overall range, making it even more capable in today's battles. Let's take a closer look at how they can get the B-52 engines going called the cart starting process. It starts with putting a small explosive into two of the eight engines on the B-52. 
This explosive makes strong air that's blown into the aircraft engine, making it spin quickly to start. This air comes from a system powered by a small turbine engine. This plane was super advanced for its time, always getting better to stay ahead. Over the years, they improved their flight technology to make it better and stronger. Programs like the Jolly Well in 1964 fixed problems with its navigation computers, while Madrek from 1965 helped find any issues with its systems. They also made it better at defending against electronic attacks with programs like Rivet Rambler and Rivet Ace. In the 1970s, they added the electro-optical viewing system to help it fly better at low altitudes. Then, in the 1980s, they gave it GPS to know exactly where it was. They even upgraded their main computer to handle all these new features. In 2007, they introduced the Lightning Targeting Pod, which made it way better at hitting targets on the ground with precision. All these upgrades made the B-52 even more powerful and effective in modern warfare. As we conclude our journey, we are captivated by the tale of the elephant walk and the thrilling air shows it inspired. Originating from the iconic scenes of World War II, where Allied bombers lined up for takeoff, resembling a majestic procession of elephants, this phenomenon has evolved into a symbol of unity and readiness in the United States Air Force. That's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.